yo guys what's up vicky melody here once again and um bringing you another tutorial you know how we do on this channel so if this is your first time joining us here it's a big family here you could subscribe and watch other videos if you don't want to subscribe the other videos will convince you to subscribe because we do amazing stuff here so without wasting much of your time there is this mix i did and um, i actually wanted to do a female vocal mix but funny enough I've, i deleted the data so i decided to just shoot a different video so as this guy i love um recording the guy is good so i'm going to play what it sounds like before and after then we'll go through um the process you understand so but my tip is usually wh whatever you're doing when it comes to mixing you do little unlike what most people feel that they need to get a lot of plugins they need to add and add and add no the right ear is your best plugin the right ear is your best plugin you understand so but i'm going to take you through you always find out that my process is usually simple understand and at any co any point if you want to have my vocal mixing preset i could you could hit me up and i will send it for you or you have a project you want to mix or master then i could run it for you you understand so but let me show you what i have here okay so this is what it sounds like before um And this is what it sounds like after the whole process. So the first thing you always notice that my 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 go to everybody has their own way of mixing, but for me I like it to sound as clean and natural as possible. So when the artist vibes on stage, like performs the song on stage, it shouldn't be far different from what they're hearing from the speakers, you understand? So I don't like like turning someone to a robot. I like maintaining the natural feel of, because that's in the natural feel, that's where the soul of the song is, you understand? Okay, so um, the first thing I added on the channel was firstly on on the on the track on the mono track i have my auto tune which is almost here to stay all the time even if you are the best singer but then i actually don't use it so much i leave it at a return speed of six then humanize it to like 69 percent understand then sometimes in auto tune there are sometimes this the tune plays a part especially when they play a lot of live um, acoustic instruments sometimes the tuning of your guitar is not usually 100 percent on it so if the sound is majorly acoustic sounds i will always use maybe a plugin to search for the detune because it might be uh, i don't know if you play keyboard now you see like something is maybe minus something detuned from the original key you understand so that's when this detune comes in too but most times it's not really ne needed because most of our plugins are usually digital and it's usually 100 percent on the key so that's why most of the times you don't bother but i'm just giving you a tip about that particular stuff because i found it useful at some point when i i needed so i brought in the auto tune yeah so and i sent um this project everything to a group track a group one normally if the vocals if the if the singer is doing multiple backups and stuff i will create a different group track for my backup tracks you understand but since it's just um here and there ad libs and stuff i just sent everything to one group track and affect them all together you get so the first thing i i used here you always hear me say the first thing i the first thing i cause oh my you guys will be used to that stuff by now so I, I use my favorite compressor which is um the cla 2 a one simple compressor to use even if you don't know attack release threshold and stuff like that this one will just get you there without even thinking but then sometimes i use far filter or other compressors depending on what i want sometimes on the back of vocals when i'm mixing them separately i don't use this because this thing 
works perfectly on lead vocals i've observed but when you want to dial in your back of vocals you need to set um attack um threshold and all those stuff because you don't want your back of vocals to be to have the same dynamics your lead vocals have so so if you've not seen compression tutorial or video you should just maybe watch this particular video on the top or in the description at the end of the video you see that yes and so i brought in my compressor most of my compressor is usually between um three to five db of gain reduction then i'm good I'm more as I wake up in the morning, just see my money, everybody calling, making a go about them me. The money when I ginger me. So it glues everything together. You understand? So after you have done your gain reduction, maybe you now add up your gain for you compensate for how much gain you've lost so that your vocal will be you know up front, you understand? So even before that, before you even start mixing, I have to bring up my other screen here. Before you start mixing, you have to make sure you have to make sure that you take down your beat even before you start mixing or recording. I usually take down my beat to have headroom because once other sound signals start coming in, they'll add up in decibel, that's in volume, and then to start picking red at the top and you start hearing distortion in your sound. So that's usually the first thing before I even start adding any process because after adding compressed everything gets loud and loud and loud you understand so I think I should play a different version of the song okay so uh, I brought in an EQ at this point and I wasn't doing too much I cut off the lows around 122 cut off this part let me see if I could solo this guy i took down these three frequencies but in this particular part around the 470 i was doing dynamic eqing i wasn't cutting it all the time it was when that particular frequency jump so i'm going to solo those frequencies so you hear what they sound like on their own No, no, everybody. We don't go. Oh, no, no. So you see, at at this point, if you observe when this thing was docking, you observe that there are. You just look at the frequency um, distribution. You see, there are some times when some words will make some frequencies peak around here. I'm on me and I go ever, ever, ever give up. See the melody where they give out. It don't make it down whenever it's up. So sometimes I, I don't want um, th that particular frequency to jump out. So that's why I'm using dynamic EQ. I, I think I first of all used a static EQ to cut it down. Then it was killing the vocal in a way. So I just want, I knew that what was causing the problem was coming and going. So I had to just use that. You understand? All I see is joy. All I see is joy. And if you observe at this particular um, chorus part, I was doing some automation, sending the vocal, the back of vocal from right to left to get create that um, dynamic movement. So uh, it creates that interest when you are listening to it. So I do a lot of automations. You have to do automations, panning and stuff like that to create that interest in your in your mix movement. Sometimes I think I also use um, offline processing. Um, this particular stuff i wasn't adding any stuff on on the channel here i just added it only on this particular vocal some DAWs can do um offline processing where you could just select an audio event and um, maybe add whatever plugin you want to affect only that so i was using a radio effect on that particular vocal alone understand so it's offline processing so those are the stuff that give you that interest and movement in your sound next thing i i added was another eq i was taking down i was taking down that kind of that frequency was muffling and sometimes before you even start doing your eq your instrumental you have to listen to it see where the most important element in the beat is 
then that will now tell you where to cut off from your vocal and where to boost in your vocal so you have to pay attention to both sounds you don't just start cutting and cutting because you are seeing a tutorial that says cut here and cut here no you first of all pay attention to the vocal and to the beat some beat elements are scanty and some beat elements are full so when the beat is full you have to do more cut either in the beat or in the vocal it's usually a sacrifice it's lost like marriage you have to you know take away some differences for the union to work you understand most of you here are young people so you guys never mind <laughs> so i did a little bit of boosting to give you air in the 11k between 10k to 12k 15k is usually the top end or the air in a vocal so it sounds like you know so that it can pop out when you're playing it through speakers like um, these laptops or even a speaker that has the tweeters you understand so your vocal is present there so i think i added a dsr simple dsr then my favorite plugin you guys will always see me use it vitamin i also use vitamin these days on my mastering yeah uh yeah it's this particular when I, especially for the low end and the high end dream master it gives it one kind of sweetness that i just discovered you understand so i use vitamin to add let me solo the vitamin to show you the frequencies i was saturating and exciting a little bit so those three frequencies are usually where i touch in the vocal depending on the vocal of the person the key at which we are singing sometimes affects how some frequencies sound you get so and then i used uh okay nothing that was just it so uh i added uh, a delay a quarter note delay one over four delay and um sent my vocal to the delay so i was using a send my i was using a send this is my mixer here it's usually on my other screen then i i sent it to my reverb you guys already know i love using this money reverb the plates and uh, one of the reasons why i love using it because it has eqs on it it has distortion it has phaser sometimes you might want to make your reverb sound different so this kind of stuff add drama to the i think i, I even the, the vocal i the project i recorded to that i think i used um a flanger inside my reverb and it, it gave you a different character that was the tutorial i wanted to shoot but i've deleted it funny enough i don't know so i sent to my reverb and it was sounding so at that part he was doing double backup so i had to pan one to the left and one to the right you understand so that was then lastly i i came to my my beats i used the track spacer to create extra space for the vocal to sit on the beat so if you've not seen it also it's, it's going to be at the top of the card or in the description where you could see the track spacer where i use it both for fl studio and for cubase so that was literally it before I So guys that was it so if you have any stuff you want to know or ask you could ask it in the description or in the comment section also drop a 
a like and also an emoji in the comment section so it helps the video to go um viral on this youtube space helps me helps you and helps all of us so if you have a mix you want to have uh, mixed by me you could contact me my contact to be on the screen constantly so you contact me everywhere yeah be creative